Hey there, everybody. We are in our last video of the environment setup unit, and we're talking about Google Colabs. So Google Colabs is a web-based version of a Jupyter Notebook. You can uh, upload and work on Jupyter Notebooks from your local file system. You can also uh, create a notebook in Google Colabs and uh, save that and then download it onto your uh, personal computer and then open that uh, with your regular Jupyter Notebook interpreter and, and work on it. There are also tools to work on Jupyter Notebook in VS Code. Uh, I personally don't use any of those tools, but I know that some people who use the accessibility features like the screen reader in VS Code have found to actually use the VS Code extension, or excuse me, the Jupyter Notebook extension for VS Code to be really helpful because they can use that screen reader um, extension as well. So um, to get to Google Colabs, uh, I'll just uh, go ahead and do a search here and we'll you can see I've been here before. I've got a nice purple link. Um, one thing that you're going to have to do before you do anything else, you're going to have to make sure that you are indeed signed in in Google. And just like always, let me go ahead and zoom in, make sure that everybody can sort of see what we've got going on. And when you first come in here, it's going to give you this sort of stock notebook that has some actual code cells. It has some markdown cells as well. And it's going to give you... Uh, this and it just actually gives you a kind of a quick tutorial, right? So you might want to actually just run through this. It talks about it a little bit, tells you what you get. Um, one of the great things about this is that, you know, you don't have to set up anything on your computer. At this point, hopefully we do all have Jupyter Notebook running, so not much of a big deal there. But um, it's really easy to share, right? Just like a Google Doc you can share. Unfortunately, unlike a Google Doc, there is not like two people editing the same document at the same time. That is not something that uh, is able to happen. However, um, you can have one person work on it and save their work and then share it with someone else who can then come and work on it without having to use GitHub as a middleman or anything like that. So, you know, that's great. But the biggest thing for me is this free access to GPUs, right? So a GPU is a graphic processing unit. And it, in general, GPUs have um, lots of slow cores as opposed to just a couple of really fast cores, which is what your CPU, your central processing unit has. So uh, in general, this, this GPU approach, just the nature of machine learning, especially uh, deep learning when you're dealing with big neural networks and videos, images, large uh, types of data files, these GPUs are uh, really valuable and they can make your experiments run a lot faster. So that's one of the biggest appeals of Google Colabs to me. But just like anything, Right, I can come in here, I can make a new notebook. It goes ahead and pops that open in a new tab. And right again, I'll make this nice and big. But more or less, this is going to work just like a Jupyter notebook where I can actually, you know, type in a code cell. The first time you run it, it actually takes a little bit. It actually has to spin up a virtual machine on a server somewhere. But I can, right, I can add a code cell, I can add a it calls it a markdown cell, but I believe, right, if I say, what did I say, x was equal to uh, 5 to the y plus a sub 4 last time, right, if I do that, my LaTeX or my MathJax still works, I can put mathematical expressions in here, or, um, right, I can do a header, um, this is math, a little typo there, right, um, and, you know, these code cells, they work the same. A lot of the hotkeys work the same. A lot of them also don't. Um, you can also see there's a lot more like graphical user interface ability here, right? I can use this up arrow to, or, or the down arrow to change the location of the cell, right? I can move the cell to the top one at a time, or then go ahead and move it all the way down to the bottom again. Um, I can insert a hyperlink pretty easily, right? I can leave comments if I'm looking at a notebook that I'm sharing with another person or multiple people, right? There are some settings, of course, and um, 
Yeah, so that's sort of the, you know, the, the Google Colab breakdown, right? It works a lot like uh, the Google Cloud, right? Again, I can just say this is a notebook that I want to delete sometime. You know, you can find it in your drive. You can open playground mode. So if someone shares a notebook with you and they give you read-only access, you won't be able to edit their notebook, but you will be able to make a copy of their notebook copy it over to your personal Google Drive, and then make edits to that copied version. And that's what they would call open and playground mode. Um, and as I mentioned, you can upload a notebook. You can also um, save a copy in Drive. You can save a copy as a GitHub gist, which is just like a single page website that has like a, a, a Jupyter notebook up as a display. You can save a copy in GitHub. You can also convert it to a regular Python file and download it or download the Jupyter Notebook file, the i, the .ipynb. Um, and you can see, right, Jupyter Notebook is the next evolution of IPython console, right? And that's where the file extension comes from, the IPython Notebook or now the Jupyter Notebook. So that's the quick breakdown. Again, it is really important here, right? It's not like some of um, other tools that you might use, like a word processor where everything is auto saved really well, or um, like Google Documents is really good about auto saving. That's not as good here. So you just want to make sure that you always make sure that you save your progress before you close things down. Uh, but that's a quick introduction uh, to the web based. Jupyter Notebook called Google Colab, short for collaboratory, right? It's a combination of collaboration and a laboratory where you can run experiments. Um, a great tool can be really handy, especially if you have uh, an experiment that you want to use on a GPU, but you don't want to have to pay for it using AWS or Microsoft Azure or something like that. There are some limitations to how much GPU use you get. I think it's a uh, experiments only up to 12 hours for the free account there is a uh, collab pro that you can upgrade to and i'm guessing that comes with a bit more access to gpus but that's the the sort of quick breakdown of the google collab notebook you'll see a lot of the materials actually will give you code examples in these notebooks so um, you can get used to seeing that and that's it for this unit. We look forward, if you're in the DSI pre-course, we're going to be moving on to GitHub next. If you're working in basic prep and premium prep, your next steps will be to move either into intermediate Python or intro to statistics. Uh, and that's really preference. You can go to either one of those after you've completed the intro to Python and got your local environment set up. So uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, appreciate your time and look forward to seeing you in the next video.